Henry with us tonight. He's one of the most anointed men I know. And you are blessed to be a part of this service tonight. And let's just welcome Ken. Tell him we're so glad he's here. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord. All right. Most of you guys should probably know this song. God, I look to you. I won't be you. Everybody awesome. 
out of your seats down to the altar we got some prayer duties tonight i want everybody to slip out of those seats they're a little bit too combining come on everybody older younger get out and come down and get shoulder to shoulder we're going to do a song called you're worthy of it all and go deep in the lord 
That's a loud praise, God. This is better than swimming because we get in the river. When everybody get out shoulder to shoulder. You're worthy of it all, Lord. This is Revelation 5. All this, all the saints and angels worship you, Lord. I want you to let go of the 4th of July now. Let go of your work week. Let's go pursue him in the throne room. We pursue you, living God, in your throne room to the secret place. It goes like this. On the saints and angels bow before your throne. You get it, man, it's so good. Their crowns before the Lamb of God. Do we get all the saints and angels? All the saints and angels bow before you. My God, my God, your majesty. There are crowns before the Lamb of God and King. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Oh, for from 
one more time and just begin to sing in the spirit. We're getting ready to pray for Gregory. So dial in, dial in, dial in. We're getting ready to target prayer right into Gregory's children's hospital, hospital room, Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sing in the spirit. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Everybody should be singing. Everybody should be singing. Touch the throne. Touch the throne. In the throne room here. This is targeted prayer. We're going to kick it just to the Gregory. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Touching the throne room. In the throne room of the Most High. God does miracles. You do miracles, Lord. We remind our soul again. You do the miracle working God nothing's over yet nothing's over yet said nothing's over this is going to be targeted prayer for Gregory Melissa and Sandy to come join up in the middle. I want you guys to stand and turn around and face the congregation. Sandy, come on over. No, right there on the, on the floor where they can touch you. No, I want you down here. No, we're going to lay hands on you. And we're sending the word. I, I'm going to ask the Jamesons to come out. Their 13-year-old oldest son is on a ventilator. Long story short, most of church, we're believing for a miracle. You guys keep playing. I'm going to get my oil out. And we're going to anoint them with oil and believe God for Gregory. Keep playing. Go oh, here it is. Oil of the Lord. I'm going to ask them to come forth. And begin to lay hands on them in proxy. We're sending the word of God. Come check this, bro. I got it now. now. We believe in miracles. Come on, church. Faith has risen. Come on, God can heal his bone marrow. He'll heal his immune system in the name. This is the mother, Melissa. Oh, God. Your oldest. The release. The release. Anointing rain. We're going to sing anointing rain. You guys get it? We're going to sing healing rain. Come on, brother. Healing rain. Send it to Gregory's room. We believe in miracles. Healing rain. The healing rain. We believe in miracles. Healing rain in this room tonight, God. We send the rain. Healing rain. Healing rain. Fall from heaven. Healing rain. Healing rain. Healing rain. Bob of Gilead. 
Something's breaking in the spirit. Something's breaking. Breakthrough, yeah. Oh, healing rain. Healing rain. Healing rain. Healing rain. Healing rain. We release tonight in Gregory's room. In Gregory. Keep going. The healing rain. We release tonight. The healing rain. We release tonight. The healing rain. you hold by every moment little Gregory the Lord says I was there when you were formed in your mother's womb wow that's so personal Lord it's very personal with Gregory Lord his mom and his grandma are standing right here and you said I was there
to high five your neighbor and say dude you're a huge history maker in the name of Jesus if you would praise God and you can make your way back to your seats but, uh, okay uh, I'm gonna have Oh my God, that felt good, didn't it, you guys? Isn't that awesome? That's really sweet, man. That's so good. I'm going to have Miss Sandy come. We're going to do local church ties and offerings. Any other announcements we need to do? How many people love Jesus or something? Let me see your hands, really? Okay, sweet, man. Wow, was that beautiful. We're not only going to do the local ties, but I believe we need to bless Kent. I just believe, you know, I, I, I feel a change in the atmosphere, don't you? I just believe with all my heart that praise and worship went to that hospital room where Gregory is. And we're going to see the life of God come forth out of him. And we're going to see him get up out of that bed. We're going to see that miracle working power, the manifestation. You know, I can't say enough about Kent. He's a mighty man of God. The Lord told us many years ago that he would send his generals this way. And I believe with all my heart, he's one of those. He's a great man of faith, a man that has endured. And the life of God that flows through him flows out to you. And I believe that you ought to bless him tonight. Don't you think so? So if you have a regular ties for Gateway, just make sure and mark that. So we'll know which is which. And I'd like you to plant a beautiful seed for Kent and let you know, let him know how much you love him. What a great moment of time this is. You know, when you sing those praises up to God, it not only changes the very atmosphere of this sanctuary, but it changes things in you. It draws you so close to God. And God can use a man to bring forth his glory upon you. And Father,
Father, I thank you for your beloved seed this night. I ask that you bless and you minister to the sower. Give back to them, Father. Multiply their seed sown. Touch every life this night. Quicken, Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for your seed. I'm so glad you came to the house of God tonight. Thank you for coming. We love you so much. Listen, we'll see. Did you mute that, bro? Let's we'll see if it's working. Now. I want to teach another song. Uh, I'm going to teach a little bit tonight, but this song is called Lavish. And uh, my daughter, uh, she wrote this about 20 minutes in the den. She said, that is sick, man. That's awesome. <laughs> about the Lamb of God and it took our church by storm. We have a new church-wide album called Forever Worthy. Because he is forever worthy, isn't he? He's the forever God. He's the eternal God. So Ariel Mariah turned 21 in May. She's still my little baby, but oh my God. Not a teenager anymore. A couple years ago, wow. We raised her in the prayer room. and You know, the other night I was watching her about a month ago on Tuesday night. I said, she got home, Dad, how was that? And I said, man, you surpassed the old man. I said, you can do everything I can and beyond. It's such a great feeling, and it's Sandy. I mean, when you see your kids. All three of them lead worship in the prayer room. I don't know how it happened, but I, I count my blessings in the Lord. Matt leads worship. My son is 33. Most people don't know him because he's a bass player. But he said, oh, yeah, I'm going to pick up a guitar and start playing in the prayer room. I said, you should have done it when you're 18. But okay. <laughs> I'll let you in right now. Uh, and then Jessica's the same way. Jessica's got a lower voice. But Ariel wrote this song uh, about Jesus that was so powerful, it, uh, it made it onto the album at the last minute. We recorded it, uh, I guess it's a year old now, that'd be right. It goes like this. Wonderful, wonderful. what you are radiant radiant you're brighter than the star glorious glorious we call Oh 
touching the hem of your garment. Healing is relief. Touching the hem of your garment. Power is released. Touching the hem of your garment. Well, healing is relief. Touching the hem of your garment. Power is released. Touching the hem of your garment. Oh, healing is relief. Uh -oh. Everybody that needs healing in your body, just stand up. I'm not going to call you forward tonight, but I want you to stand up. We're going to sing over you, and you're going to get healed tonight. Because Jesus said so. It's who he is. It's how he does. Any kind of healing. We're going to sing this little, this is a spontaneous song. Came right out of Ariel's song. Because you know, he, all these people were surrounding Jesus. And he stopped the crowd and said, who touched me? Lord, uh, there's about 30 people around you right now. I'm sure Peter was there, you know, do, can, doing traffic or something. And the crowd parted. She goes, I did. Because power, virtue went out of me. I want you to close your eyes tonight and power is coming straight from the Lord to you. Touching the hem of your garment my healing is relief touching the hem of your garment power is relief touching the hem of your garment my healing is relief that's awesome touching the hem of your garment real power is relief Touching the hem of your garment, my healing, I receive it tonight. Touching the hem of your garment, your power is really, well, we're touching the hem of your garment, my healing is really, touching the hem of your garment. Your power I receive Touching the hem of your garment My healing is released Touching the hem of your garment Your power is released Touching the hem of your garment My healing is released Touching the hem Sing it, I break my vial. I break my vial of worship over you. While you're being healed, you're worshiping. I lavish my love on you. The sinner holding only this perfume. Touching the hem of your garment, your power is released. Touching the hem of your garment, my healing I receive. Touching the hem of your garment, your power I receive. Touching the hem of your garment my healing is really touching the hem of your garment your power is really touching the hem of your garment my healing i receive touching the hem of your garment my healing
thank you for your word and your presence, God. Just sing this simple song. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Higher and higher in your presence tonight. Thank you, Lord. Deeper and wider in your love tonight. not on television I said because you can't do it in three minutes shut up that's good teacher right there why is worship never on television because you won't give it time let it linger let it blaze let it fire up you're not in a hurry because we love your presence and your name oh how we love you Lord how we love you Lord with all our might with all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength, and all our soul. Loving on you, 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 loving on you.
freaky, it's good though. Yeah, loving on you, loving on you, loving on you, loving on you, loving on you. Loving on you. Somebody say, so be it, Lord. come up in just a minute um, it's better to do worship than to teach on it I mean next summer August of 9, uh, 2014 I'll have been leading worship 40 years oh my lord that's a lot that's when dinosaurs were roaming the earth dude <clears throat> I ran into to a bunch of kids at Umsel's campus when I was 19 I got spirit filled Easter night of 1974 and uh, ran into Ron Tucker and his friends, and we were best friends, and Lord, growing up for three to four years there, and they asked me to be on a worship team August of 74, and you know, it says don't raise up a novice in the church, but I guess they looked in my eyes and said, yeah, he loved Jesus, and I've, no, Jesus saved my life, I've never looked back, and that's a long time ago, so doing worship is better than teaching on it, and I'm just going to ask Cap and Sandy, I don't know what time you guys normally get out, but Carla, why don't you come out and do the CD table announcement uh, if you want to grab Forever Worthy and Ariel's album because they haven't seen it. What I'm going to show you tonight, I'm so very grateful, very grateful. It's finally done. The first book is called Streaming in Heaven's Flow. For years, people begged me, please slow down <laughs> and sit down and write it down. And it was Lynette Young, my secretary, who labored with me over this. It's streaming in heaven's flow, worship, prayer, music, these powers, these triumph over the powers of darkness. It's some of my life story. It's some of the prayer room the last six years, but it's really how music, prayer, and worship should have never been separated. I would never pray anymore without music underneath of it. There's no reason to do it. It's legal, and it's better than drugs. I, 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 I got to tell you, Hap, I... I uh, I don't know if I would ever made it, but I was just thinking of James Taylor tonight. I'm glad I didn't sign the big country music contract when I was 18 and 19 before I got saved. I would have gained the whole world and lost my soul. I, I couldn't think of it. That last song was James Taylor-ish. How many remember who James Taylor is? A lot of the kids go, who? I don't know. Some of us were around back in the day. Um, but the, the bottom phrase is intermingling praise with prayer and worship with intercession. Since I've been 30 years old, June 9th, uh, last month, I turned 60. I can't even believe I'm saying that out loud, dude. How many are over 40, but you're still 19 in your heart, and we're not, we're not giving it up. We're just, we might be older and uglier, but we're going to keep going. It's all right. As long as you're anointed, it shouldn't make any difference, right? And this, if you're anointed, it, they'll, they'll receive it. Um, here's the, uh, the 10 chapters. I, I am shocked. We did Create Space with this book, and um, it's an Amazon company. And they say, we'll get it to you in two weeks. So they got it to me in four days. And this is one of the first places we're selling it. I, I, I feel it's really cool because of our history. And uh, every believer, every intercessor should, should actually read it. It'll confirm everything you're doing. I teach a lot more on prayer now than I did, you know, six or seven years ago. By the way, before I forget, this coming Thursday night is the 11th, right? Somebody check the calendar. Friday is the 12th. Is that right? So the Praying Church Conference at Destiny Church, 270 in Manchester. How many have been on 270 before and wish you'd never been on it? Never mind. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, right outside our church, half, every day at 3.30, the traffic starts back. It's a nightmare. I, I would hate to have to commute down Highway 270. But our church is right at 270 in Manchester. Everybody know where the West County Mall is, where the Dove is? You know, they took that Dove down and people made them put it back up. Because it, it's a landmark. Everybody goes, go by the dove, man. I, I'm saying that's the Holy Spirit descending on St. Louis. Let's just believe that. <laughs> it's not the mall. It's going to be where people get touched by the Spirit. Okay, here's the chapters. Built to run together. Prayer with praise and worship with intercession. The second chapter is Jesus is the core of everything. We have lost our way. George Barna, Barna Research Institute in California 
said that 80% 80, uh, 80% of people who go to church every Sunday, they don't go for the Lord. They go because their friends are there. No, it, he's a statistician. I go, I, I know that because I see that. I mean, we can blaze on Friday night or Saturday night or Sunday night. When I start on Sunday morning at, at a host church when I'm doing an event, I start all over. They have no idea who I am. I have to gain their trust. So it's like cheerleading for a minute. And then you, you take them deep and they like you. But I, I'm telling you, it's crazy. So most people don't come to church for the Lord anymore, which is it's uh, mind-blowing to me personally. At least they're still coming. Hopefully the Lord will. I'm talking Baptist Church, Assembly of God, Full Gospel. Uh, the third chapter is the prayers of the saints. That song, the second song we did, Incense Rising. I, I now understand the prayers of the saints not only damage the kingdom of darkness when they're released in the second heavens, but they also are caught up in bowls. It says in Revelation 5 that the elders had a harp in one hand, which a harp is the oldest known musical instrument, and it's harp music and worship, and they had bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So when you pray, there's two things a devil cannot stop. That is, when you make a choice to open your mouth and begin to worship, he can't, he can't touch you when you're doing that. And when you open your mouth and begin to pray and intercede, he can't touch on that. that. That's a creed with God. He said, look, you're not messing, especially New Testament believers. Anyway, um, it goes on to, well, chapter 4 is called Because of Love. It was going to be 12 chapters. I had 12, uh, you know, chapters up on my den wall because I'm visual. I need to see it. And we got done with chapter 10. Actually, we got done with the first six. And I said, oh, my God, Lynette, I've made a huge mistake. She, she goes, I hate that when you do that. <laughs> I said, this is a worker B book. I don't want a worker B book where you got to work to do it. I said, I want you to put up a new Word document, and I'm going to close my eyes, and you're going to type what I say. And I took off with my eyes closed, speaking slowly. And I guess 20 minutes later, we had nine pages. I do this because I love him. And I love him because he first loved us. Are you with me? If you don't love in this, you won't last at it. There's nothing if love's not a part of it. So it's chapter, thank God it was a saving grace of the book. Anyway, you can check it out on the way out. They're, they're 15 bucks, but if you buy three, they drop to $10. I, I, anything after that, because small worship teams, uh, it, it, it's a study. You can take your whole worship team through it. Come on up, Carla, and you can do that. Well, I kept trying to get his attention earlier um, because I got something I need to share with you guys, you know, which is I think is going to build your faith. Um, tonight, God is bringing something full circle. Five years ago, it was about five years ago, we were here, and um, we were praying for the sick. And there was a couple in the audience that brought, for, brought a baby up. And I don't know if y'all remember that or not, but it's about five years ago, so this baby's five years old now. <clears throat> and it had some issues with the heart. A hole in the heart, or I, I can't remember exactly what it, was, what it was. And I don't remember if it was a girl or a boy, but if any of you know, just let me know later. And so while we were praying for this baby, I had a vision. And I, I, share, I think I shared that that night. I'm, I'm positive I did. But the vision that I had was like a veil, like a, a veil of water where you could see through it, but not very clearly. And on the other side of this veil, Jesus was being scourged. It was, the, it was what you would see if you were 2,000 years ago standing there, you would be looking at Jesus being scourged. And I understood that this veil was like a, a time-space issue. And as we were praying, I saw this mother take this baby and pass it through the veil and put it into Jesus as he was being scourged. And Jesus became like a womb for this baby. And that was it. I shared that, and we left. And three years later, we came back, and somebody said, this is the child. There's this three-year-old running around here. This is the child that, that was prayed for that night and was totally healed. So a couple weeks ago, it was about uh, three and a half, maybe four weeks ago, uh, Kent's the pastoral care pastor at Destiny now, and so we were doing a hospital call. We were ministering to this woman who is a Muslim, or she's from the Muslim community that Oasis ministers to, to um, 
the acres. I don't, many of you may know that may know them. Her name is Hind. She's thirty something years old and has terminal cancer. Well, uh, we prayed for her, and then the Saturday night after that, her husband he comes to church. You know, he comes to Destiny with Mark and Joni, and I was reminded of that that incident, that vision that I had of that baby being healed, and uh, and I was telling them about it. And so the next day we get a text from a friend of ours that said a friend of ours up in Quincy, a pastor, had a massive stroke and was in the hospital. He was 59 years old. He has a 7-year-old and a 4-year-old child. And so uh, Kent came home early and we, we wound up going to the hospital the next day on Monday. And we walked in intensive care and here's Gary, you know, with the breathing tube in and he's not conscious and his wife was there and God had spoken to Kent about taking authority like an Indian chief would, you know, taking authority. And so he was there, and, and as we laid hands on him, you know how God manifests himself by a name? Like he'll, he'll say what, what his name is, and that's how he's manifesting himself. Well, as soon as we laid hands on him, I heard repair of the breach. And I saw the blood vessels in his brain. I thought, saw the blood vessels in his head. They were broken. And then the next thing that I saw as we were praying was I saw a breach in the front line because he's a real prayer warrior. And, you know, prayer warriors are like the front line of the battle. And I saw a breach in that. So I'm thinking about that. And all of a sudden, Ken starts saying to his wife or to Gary, who couldn't hear, he's like, I see Jesus coming with surgical instruments like lasers, and he's repairing the breach. And I just about fell over. I mean, the power of God was so manifest in that room. I couldn't even, I said, you better get a chair. I got to sit down, you know. So we sat down and, uh, and we prayed for him and then we left. And the next morning, you know, Kent had drawn some of the intercessors together at Destiny to pray for, for Gary. And about an hour later, maybe two hours later, he gets a text that said, they've taken the breathing tube out and Gary is speaking as normal. That was on Wednesday. Prayed for him on Monday, Tuesday, you know, or, or, yeah, Tuesday we got this word. He went home on Thursday out of ICU. Didn't even go to a hospital room. Just went right from ICU home. <clears throat> but during the time, the reason why I say that is during the time that we were praying, I also saw us pick him up and put him through the veil. So there's something in, in, in the reason why I say it's coming full circle is the, the thing, the issue with Gregory, and, and you've asked why, and I'll tell you why. During worship, God said, because you had the audacity to have healing rooms here. You have the audacity as a body to establish God's kingdom here in that form. So don't be angry. But know that warfare, and one of the things that Gary said, we saw him this morning. We went up to his church this morning. Here he comes walking in, looking as normal as we saw him uh, six months ago. Amazing. No, no palsy, no anything. And um, he said that while Kent was praying for him, while we were in the room, he was in a dark place. And he said all of a sudden he saw light like at the end of the tunnel. But then as he was looking at it, the light began to manifest like fire. And he, he realized that the fire was the prayers of the saints because as he saw this fire, he also smelled the incense. So there's power in your intercession and there's power in what you do. Don't be angry. God said, don't be angry, Sandy, Melissa. Don't know about what happened with Gregory. Don't be angry about it. But just know that it's because you had the audacity to establish God's kingdom here. Anyway, we've got CDs out there. You can check them out later. Now, I'm just going to roll back into some worship. Uh, Sandy said sometime between 7.30 and 8. Um, wow, I, I'm really blessed. I, that beyond the veil thing lit me up, man, because... When I walked into that, I've been in intensive care a lot. I mean, after as a young minister, it it really freaks you out. You got to get ready for stuff, man. Because if you've never been in intensive care, I mean, there's diodes and machines going, and they're beeping. And and uh, actually, with Gary, 
right before I got there. And I was pretty tired, by the way. Sometimes when you're tired is your best time to flow in the anointing because you totally... Is that the compressor doing that, bro? You need to release the compressor or something? Is it like hitting it really hard like that? Um, but when I, the Lord told me before I walked in the room, Hap, I'll never forget this, and you have to be led by the Holy Spirit every day. And how many are keeping Gregory in your prayers? Word of the Lord is miracle healing rain. Word of the Lord, we're not going backwards, we're going forward. I had never heard this in my life, and I've been around a long time. He said, Kent, the Lord said, I want you to go in like an old Indian chief and take authority over the atmosphere in that room and then start praying and doing what I tell you to do. And that, that's what, even great healers will tell you in healing lines, they're just doing what the Holy Spirit's telling them to do. And if you do beyond that, you'll get judged for it anyway. If you build a ministry on that and it's not true, it's a fake, you, you're not going to like it at the end. <laughs> Judgment's coming for every man. So the two things I did want to mention is that this is the album Forever Wor Worthy. I I'm sure I didn't have this. It's been a couple years since I've been here. Lavish Ariel song is on this one. It's multi cover colored and it has forever worthy on it and then this if you want something devotional well if if you get this this is why i tell everybody that's the baby girl on the back right there her name's ariel mariah i said when i take you to israel they're going to think you're jewish that name ariel mariah the mount of sacrifice but this is her first album it's very precious if you it starts devotionally it'll draw you in a band joins her and you know, they're peeling paint off the back wall. I mean, not, not in a weird way. I'm telling you, it's really powerful. So if you want something for your devotional time, this is called Come With Me. It's super girly because she's a girl. <laughs> I was looking at the cover going, Ariel, man, I want boys to buy this, okay? <laughs> this won't be, but of course, everything is on iTunes and CD Baby. So it doesn't make any difference. People don't even get the jacket anymore. I hate that. I guess I'm old school that way. I want to see the artwork and know who worked on the album anyway. Uh, what I want to do, just uh, uh, John 4, 20, uh, John 4, 20 through 24. I'm not going to teach it, but if, if you want to look at something on worship that will change your life, this is the worship Sunday night worship series, right? Wasn't Jackie DeShetler here last week or two weeks ago? And was there somebody here last week or no? Okay, but uh, I'm the second then, and you're doing like six weeks or something. On, thanks for doing it, by the way, you guys. Nobody talks about worship anymore anywhere. I mean, they don't even do it on Sunday morning. And they asked me why their people aren't worshiping. I said, when's the last time? Pastors will ask me at lunch on Sunday afternoon, Kent, Friday night, blazing, love it, Saturday morning training, Saturday night. Why is this not happening more in my church? I saw, I saw what I was there. And I said, bro, go get me the cassette or CD series the last time you taught on praise and worship at your church. He goes, I don't know. I said, well, then how do you expect people to do stuff you never teach them on? I think a church twice a year three weeks at a time should just go into the power of worship again and maybe you know put prayer on the tail end of it or whatever but um there's two songs we want to close with because the band said i'd be excommunicated i could never come back unless i did these no they didn't say that but it's pretty funny uh, one is called faithful to the end and the other is all is for your glory so what i'm going to do is all is for your glory first uh, and I want you to look at the lyrics of this. Th this is stuff that comes out of the prayer room in Kansas City. And there's a lot of great stuff coming out of Jesus culture as well. But I'm telling you, when you sit in the prayer room three hours a day, which is what a lot of these students and interns do uh, seven days a week, you're going to hear the voice of the Lord. If you're going to pray at a high level two or three hours a day, you should be hearing something and getting revelation. And we'll see if my guitars work. And I apologize to the sound guys. It, it's my, I think it's my internal input that's given us a problem. I have to take it to Guitar Center and check it out. Oh, it's there. Thank God. Um, but the re reason I'm saying this is when I heard this song, well, just check out these lyrics. There's just one chief in two man's birth. Really? There's one main reason for existing. Think of these lyrics. And all man's vain and high ambition Check this out right here Will one day be brought low Somebody say thank God Will one day be brought low We're going to treasure you, Lord, above all others We're going to 
never leave you or forsake you even until the end of the age oh. faithful to the end faithful to my heart faithful to the end you'll come and marry me
many got something out of it? Say amen if you did. What a great, I'm so glad to be back in Gateway Family Church. No longer greater glory, but we're believing for the greater glory at Gateway Family. It's a good night in the presence of the Lord, eh? I love this Sunday night summer series. I don't care how many come out or not, but it was good to worship the Lord. So let's pray and seal it up. Father, we thank you right now for the ultimate glory of that story, God. That we're part of the release of the honor and the power of heaven on earth, God. You're going to use every at work, on the streets, God. Every place we go to share the good news. It's not bad news. It's good news of your salvation from our sins and the penalty of our sins, Lord. We give you thanks tonight and say bring huge revelation to our hearts. Bring huge revelation in our hearts for worship, your presence, and prayer, how they all work together. We'll be careful to give you the honor, the credit, and the glory. Somebody shout amen. I want you to grab two or three people around you and tell them you love them. You guys are dismissed. We'll see you this week. Church, man, in the Word. Thank you for joining us in today's service. If you would like the opportunity to give, go to gatewayfamilychurch.com. Then click on the tab About Gateway. There you'll have the option to give online where you can have your opportunity to give your tithes and offerings conveniently online. We would like to thank you for joining us in today's service. And if you would like more information, come check us out at gatewayfamilychurch.com.